Hi there, glad you could join us for this episode of The Weekly Send. The Weekly Send is powered by Foundant Technologies, a technology partner in your nonprofit's mission. Achieve your goals through solutions built for nonprofits and dedicated to your success. And by 1832 Communications, helping you build more relationships and raise more money. Today, we're joined by a top sector fundraising expert, Barbara O'Reilly. I'm so excited she's here with us today. How you doing, Barbara? I'm okay, Ephraim. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Barbara, introduce yourself to everyone, please. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I'm so always delighted to be um, talking to you, Ephraim. Uh, I'm Barbara O'Reilly, principal of Windmill Hill Consulting. Uh, we are a nonprofit consultancy that works with organizations to give them the skills and the confidence and the resources that they need to raise more money and build more, uh, more and stronger donor relationships. Awesome. So Barbara is the perfect guest for today's email, which comes from Feeding America. Mm -hmm. It's a fundraising email. And before we get started with the actual email, uh, as always, we start with the subject line. And the subject line is, some of my students aren't excited for summer. I liked it because it kind of turns things upside down. We know students generally, yay, summer, no school. They've turned that upside down. And so that caught my attention. In terms of who the email came from, it says here, they give me a name, Jenny Brown School Teacher, which is good. So I know now there's a person behind this email. What's not great is who it came from and the reply to email address, which is the generic info at feedingamerica.org. Now it could be that Jenny isn't an employee of Feeding America and that's fine. I would still like a name here in the email address. So the email is personalized as a one-to-one -one communication. So let's go and we're gonna ask Barbara, she's going to critique and review this email that came from Feeding America. So go ahead, Barbara, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Ephraim. So first of all, I echo what you just said about changing the perspective. I That was one of the things that caught my attention right away. I liked uh, hearing from the teacher perspective. I especially liked that uh, sort of she was describing what she was hearing in the classroom her students. And then I liked really at the end, having the picture and her name once again reinforced, but having the picture really gave me a uh, reinforce the visual that I had already had in my mind from reading the copy. Um, I also liked um, that it helped to paint a picture. I would have liked to see a little bit more um, of those one-on-one -on -one stories. So maybe a pic, one or two pictures of students so I could see their faces. I know that there, there's this nice montage at the top, um, but I actually over, I overlooked it. I went right to the copy and just didn't even look at that top banner. So maybe one or two pictures at the top would catch my eye a little bit more um, quickly. I liked at the bottom, uh, I think it's the last paragraph where it says, help provide meals for as many kids as families, uh, for kids and families as possible. That to me right there showed that I can have make a difference in kids and families. It connected me directly as a reader. It connected me directly with, uh, with their mission, as opposed to the other um, hyperlinked sentence up at the top. That's why I'm hoping you'll make a donation for, for summer's break, blah, blah, blah. For me, I, I had to think about, okay, if I make a donation, it was too many, it was too many things to connect, uh, too many dots to connect in my mind. I think ha rephrasing that so that it's right up in front. In fact, actually probably flipping those sentences, help provide as many meals as you can sort of thing. Um, just reinforce it, take away that, my donation is going to do. We are, the donor will assume that by, uh, by the ask, by the way that you've hyperlinked it, by the way you're saying this call to action. Um, the other thing I will say though, that I didn't, the things I didn't like were that there was no personalization. So I didn't know why I, as a, as a recipient of this email would be getting it. There was no dear so-and-so. Uh, there was no a uh, sense of that social proof. Why would I, why am I getting this? You know, don't you care as much as we do about making sure our kids are well fed so that they can leave, you know, yeah. succeed in school, lead fulfilling lives and so forth. There's none of that, which I would like to, again, just to lift it a little bit more. Um, I would say um, uh, that otherwise I think it was fine. Um, and it was, you know, it was really nicely written from that perspective. I think that's, uh, that was great. 
the donation page though, or some other um, areas where I thought there could be just a little, some, again, some slight tweaks to, um, to maximize the, the effectiveness. Perfect. So we're going to go to the donation page in a second. Um, I echo everything you said, and I want to just show people right here at the top. Yeah. These are very good quotes. My tummy hurts. I have a headache. Yeah. And the teacher explains how that kind of tips them off, that Correct. something's wrong and they don't have food. And that then leads into the S. I echo what Barbara said. I would prefer that it's that one-to-one -one communication. Since we know it came from Jenny, I would love if it started Dear Barbara. And now yeah. it's a one-to-one -one communication. Okay, so that's that's the letter we got an email. Let's take a quick look at the mobile version. You can see that it is nicely spaced out in terms of the paragraphs. There's enough white space so that I can skim and read. The two asks that are linked here are very easy to find in terms of their color. It's their brand color. So it stands out against the white background. I've got the great picture and signature here of the teacher who sent it to me. So the mobile um, email is laid out well. It's done well, easy to read, quick for me to scroll, click, and I know what to do. So as Barbara mentioned, there was an ask here. And as always, we go to the online donation form. And I want to share with you Feeding America, Help End Hunger Today. And as we've talked about in previous episodes, always use a good hero image. I think this one works very, very well. What I want to ask Barbara to discuss, there are two issues here. You'll notice the gift amount. There's monthly and there's one time. The first issue is that there are six different options here for a donor, both in monthly and one time. And the donations are listed from lowest $10 to highest $250. And here in monthly, it's 10 to 100. Barbara, if you could uh, address both of those issues, please. Yeah, so I would say the first thing is um, always start from largest to smallest. There's um, something in neuroscience called anchoring, which is that our brains will shortcut as much as possible when we're making decisions. And so if I see a $10 a month, that's the anchor. And I'm and in my mind, I'll say, sure, I could do $10 a month. Boom, and I click on that and that's it. Or on the one time, the, the same first option, that's where I'm gonna, you know, the $10 there, great. I, I, if it was anchored in, in this example, 250 first, I might say, I can't do 250. Oh, but I can do 100, sure, I'll do that. Uh, so you're, it, by, by flipping the order, you're, you're changing which is going to be, which number is gonna be the anchor so that donors will have opportunities to sort of eliminate and then stretch where they where possible because this way right now the anchor is the lowest amount and we are more than likely going to be leaving money on the table in this order um, the other though I would say is that I don't have a sense in either the monthly or the one time um, how how this is going to make a difference how many kids this is or how many meals are these gift amounts going to provide so while I love that they have a little, uh, a little disclaimer, giving monthly is the most effective way. Yes, absolutely. That's highlighting it. That's drawing attention uh, again in their brand colors. I would really like to have something else that maybe tells a story. You know, did you know $50 a month will provide, you know, uh, uh, meals for a hundred kids, uh, you know, whatever. It, so there, there are ways that you can get that cause and effect uh, so that the donor can see, again, be reminded of the gift and the, the, the person that's good as the child is going to benefit from their gift um, and how, how much of an impact that, that contribution is going to potentially have. Just a quick question to wrap things up. Is six options too many? Yeah. So I, um, again, going back to neuroscience, we, our brains can really only process about four options at most. So this, these are a lot. Um, I would suggest, you know, maybe trimming it down to four of these gift amounts, still leaving the other that I don't think will make that much of a difference, but having six are, again, our brains will just sort of shut down after, um, after four. Got it. So we've got three takeaways. We've got a lot of takeaways. Barbara gave you a lot of uh, helpful um, tips and best practices, but we're going to go with the three takeaways for this week's episode. Number one, change your perspective. You don't always have to tell stories from the beneficiary's perspective. And this was a good example where they used a teacher to tell the story. Number two, if the subscriber is a previous donor, reflect that in the copy, as Barbara said, tell me why you're sending this to me and why you want me to make a donation. And number three, 
on the online donation page don't have too many options, but more importantly, in your donation ops, list them from highest to lowest, anchor at the higher number so you don't end up leaving money on the table. Barbara, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And Always thank you to, sorry. Always a pleasure. Awesome. <laughs> and thank you everyone for joining us for this episode of the Weekly Send, where we help you boost your email fundraising and marketing. We'll see you again next week.